Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Bryce with BIS Media, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Panamax MR5100 power conditioner and surge protector. But before we get into the overview or the specs or the unboxing, I'd just like to say, if you haven't been to the channel, welcome. If you like movies, home theater, video games, and much, much more, click that notification bell, hit that subscribe button, and let's get to know each other a little bit more. With that being said, let's jump into the unboxing and take a look at the specs. Okay, so here is the actual box for the Panamax MR5100. We're going to take a look at that. It does come with 11 total outlets that you can plug into. It does have a digital voltage reader on the front, so you can actually see how much power is going into it. The outside of the box, it kind of shows all the specifications, all the bells and whistles that this does come with. Retail currently, it's at $454 on Crushfield. I got mine from an authorized uh, uh, dealer on through amazon and i got mine for 311 dollars so uh not a bad deal there and it does come with a three-year warranty if you do buy it from an authorized dealer so we're unboxing it and opening it up here there's not a whole lot that comes within the box here it just comes with a one-page manual that's basically worthless it doesn't really tell you much which is kind of a bummer because of all the outlets are not really named as far as what should be plugged into those i see that's more of a complaint from what i've seen on different comments and reviews about this. It comes with four little pieces of styrofoam on the corners to protect it, and that shrink wrap that goes on the front and all around it, and there it is, looks very clean. And here is all those outlets on the back. We're gonna take a look at those a little closer here in a moment. And so we're gonna go ahead and pick out the last part in the box, and that's the little brackets for you to put it on a shelf if you'd like. And here's a close-up look of the front here. And then we're going to switch it over to the back so that way we can really take a look more at these outlets because as you can see on the back of this, it doesn't have them labeled as far as what should be plugged into each one. I don't know why they did that because I have an older 2000 model and it has the exact same setup as far as there being three separate banks, but it actually tells you what you should plug into each one. This one, I guess they just think that everyone should know by now. <laughs> obviously that's not the case for everybody and I honestly probably wouldn't know either until I really looked it up or something and so I basically use that same concept from my old one and put it to this one as you can see on this image here uh, bank three that's the high current delayed outlets that one you should put like your receiver your subwoofers amplifiers anything like that in there bank two is the filtered switched outlets you can put game systems a blu-ray player accessories and then bank one, that's also a filtered always on outlets. And that's like your TV, plus basically anything from bank two because bank two only has two. So if you got some extra small things like that, like a game system, you know, Blu-ray player, anything like that, those are okay to plug into those two. Then the front always on, that would be basically the same as bank one. That's really if you just want to plug something to the outside, maybe like a charger of some sort, but there is a USB for that. It's kind of up to you if you want to do that, but I try to break that down for you guys just so it's a little easier to understand. And then last but not least, there's also an eight foot cord. So you got plenty of room to plug this bad boy in. Okay guys, after that unboxing and overview of all the specs, just want to show you guys, it actually plugged in here. This is it all lit up. Wait, sit down here on the floor so you can take a closer look at it. So you get a power button, you get bank one, two, and three all lit up, saying they're on. This actually adjusts the brightness. This thing gets incredibly bright once you first plug it in. So I would definitely recommend putting this like on the lowest if you really don't want something just brightening up the whole room if it's pitch black. <laughs> Here's this always on. And then here is the USB if you just need to plug in a phone or something to light it up. It's I can't say a whole lot about it. I mean, it's doing its job. I've had a couple of different power outages in the area. This kicked it off, turned it back on right after the power came on. Everything's still working, got everything plugged in. As you can see, well, I guess you can't see it, but there is every single one of these basically uh, taken up in the back. So it's it's getting its usage. It's been working great for me. The only thing, other thing I would say is this one, for some reason, compared to my old Panamax, you actually have to press the power button to get everything working because I first plugged it in. 
and it wasn't doing anything. And I was like, okay, is this thing busted or something? But you actually have to press the power button to get all the banks to come on. That's something new to me. Maybe everyone else already knew that. I don't know. But <laughs> anyways, guys, that is the Panamax MR5100 power line conditioner and surge protector. Make sure you give it a thumbs up if you like the video. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Take care.